So we are doing meditation, mindfulness, and uh, based on the text by the Shankara, the great master known as Sadhana Panchikam. So every, uh, he wrote only five verses. And in five verses, he has given 40 steps. And these 40 steps covers our personal life, professional life, social life, spiritual life, family life. So it covers the whole life, means how to allow the entry of mindfulness in day-to-day -day activities. Not only, not only in personal life, but professional life. So what happens? What happens? Then you think, speak, and act from the state of mindfulness. Then what it means? You, ego is replaced by the higher consciousness. So your outer expression will be the same. Uh, you will say, hello, how are you? Uh, what you are doing? But the center of that existence comes into play through your body, mind, life, and activity. That state is known as awakening. Awakening is not anything that is found in heaven because heaven does not exist. So we have covered two steps. The first step was constant, regular study. Become a student of the Eastern wisdom. Ah, that was our first step. And we follow by listening, learning, and contemplation and reflection, that is very important. The second part, we second step we covered, the different types of karma. You see that? Don't you get a clarity? Uh, this is essential karma. This is non-essential karma. This is voluntary karma. This is involuntary karma. This is prescribed karma. And this is prohibited karma. So once I understand, uh, as in knowledge in the mind, your honey says something, so the mind wants to react. Prohibited karma. <laughs> Whether the honey says anything that is totally unacceptable. But what is prohibited karma? You need not to react. You need not to get angry. Is that possible? Yes. When that ego is replaced by the higher consciousness. I even told the Anne story. I, it was only a week in, uh, in United States, uh, almost in 2007. So not even a week. So I was driving in a, it was the month of August. So I was <clears throat> driving in a rainy, yeah, it was raining heavily. <clears throat> so perhaps I was driving in Princeton, and there was a slopey road. So uh, the speed, my car naturally got a speed. Cop was there. He gave me a ticket, and I explained to him, and he said, no way. So I didn't pay the fine, so I was summoned in the court. So there was a beautiful women judge. Because I was fully aware that both India and USA are democracy. So we have to use the freedom with responsibility. That was already in my head. So the beautiful judge asked me what you do. So I was pointing to the head. I said, I put this machine into order. What? I put this machine into order. And the cough, the cough was also looking. Look at this, how you perform the karma. So, 
what you do. So, uh, okay, okay, I understand. So you are counseling. Yes, yes, yes. So he's, she started laughing. I said, now I got the things done. I'm not going to pay the fine. See the point. I was no more concerned that how to fight with the cop to put forth my argument. So what happened? So I explained it. So she said, $119, so you have to pay the court fee, $19. $100 admonished. Look at this. That is the way to perform your karma. Even in very stressful situations and conditions. You need not to worry what to prove. You need to put your forth your point. So how to explain this particular action? Uh, recently another beauty, you know, women are always beautiful. You know, we should. Uh, Sergey, do you agree? Stephen, do you agree? Well, women are old. So she sent a message that I want a couple of audio practices and I will pay for it from India. I said, here is a speaker. You can use one, any of these 1,000 practices totally free. And she reacted. For what? No, no. I have my own integrity and I will pay you before I use it. What is this? I said, no, I'm not uh, asking you. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it, throw it. Intention of not doing the practice, but intention of using that ego. Don't do that in our daily life in our relationship, in our personal life, in our professional life. In our, so don't do it. And taught me a lot of things when I was in New Jersey. You have written wrongly. I never responded, never reacted. I said, correct it. <laughs> so she has taken my work. <laughs> Where is my problem? Now, Showing you. So I'm going a little deeper. The third and the fourth principle is to redefine and refine these actions in your daily life. Because the mind gathers too much desire, craziness, reaction, we have to change the quality versus quantity. Desire in the mind leads to action. And the mind prompts me to satisfy that desire. Can you break that pattern of the mind and ask why? Why? I have to satisfy my integrity. The cop was not wrong. What he did, he is right in his own way. But I also saw that I am right. So I have to see an opportunity and find an opportunity how to act in a way to get the things done, not to start fighting with others. Are you understanding that? That is a very subtle step in our daily life that we need to do it. Uh, and uh, my Ani says, uh, should I cook eggplant? I said, yes, that is very good. I don't have any preference. No, no, I should prepare, cook lentil, and that would be good in the morning. I said, that is also good. So either you satisfy your desire or what is the principle? You all know it, but we don't apply it. What is that principle? Eat to live or live to eat. Eat to live, live to eat, desire, eat. Just let the food come. Let me enjoy that food. So I have to bring 
about a qualitative change in this karma in day-to-day -day activities. <clears throat> I'm not going in detail, but uh, I observe people. I understand people. I'm not opening up everything about Anne, the way the Anne is doing karma for her married kids, it is unparalleled. So much care from every respect. I'm speaking out today. I never told her, but the way she is taking care, it is unparalleled. It should have been the other way around, that those kids <laughs> should be taking care of him. So we can use that karma. So where comes these, prob these principles? How to bring these into a principle? Shankaracharya, karma with wisdom, clarity in the mind, rather than carried away by desire to satisfy my ego. Let me satisfy the existence, why I am born, whatever I know, let me enjoy expressing it in thought, speech and action all the time. Why only in a session? Why not with my honey? <laughs> See that? Can we? Why not in a class? So you replace that desire in performing a karma. And you say, this is the highest existence. I'm offering this karma to you. I have the highest wisdom. I keep that highest wisdom in the life. To express either in thought, in speech, in action. This is the third and the fourth principle. It means you refine, you redefine every action that you perform. What is the ultimate result of that? You play and perform your role well in life. So what our master says, when you play and perform your role well in your personal, professional, social life, you are not busy, you are not fully busy, you are not lazy, you are not crazy. And when you are not lazy and crazy and obsessed, so what happens to the meditation? Meditation becomes so natural in your life. Are you getting it? It becomes so natural in your life. But one of the most important things this, that must, this master is saying, that when you play and perform your role well in life before departure, did you understand? Before departure from this world, that departure creates a beautiful arrival, the law of karma, birth and the death. Let karma help us to evolve, not satisfy our desire. Desire will definitely be satisfied. I'm going to a restaurant to eat pasta. It will be. But internally, the entire landscape of the mind has changed completely. Landscape of the mind has changed completely. One thing in this week you have to think, I told you that this is Sadhana Panchakam, very deeper text, and it needs minimum 100 hours of explanations we open up. But um, what are the five factors of each karma that we do, whether I speak, whether I think that is also a karma, or whether I perform the karma from the physical. There are 
five factors which are common to every car. First, body. Without body, I cannot do the car. Clear? And uh, can you think of the second factor, the doer? Who is the doer? Is ego the doer? Or is the true nature in me is the doer? That makes a hell of a difference. So how to start that? Change my attitude. Intent. Intent and idea. Let me express myself in peace and happiness when I'm giving a session. So what is going to happen? I'm helping myself much more than you guys. Do you see that? You are going to the kitchen, you are cooking a food. You enjoy that I'm cooking it for existence. Existence has given me an opportunity. So you are replacing that ego doer as an existence doer. What is the third factor? Our sense organs. Sense organs, both. Sense and the motor organs. They need to function properly. These tools are required. So what we did, five factors of the karma. Body, the doer in me. Doer is different than the body. Sense organs and motor organs. And the very action. The very action means that are the sense organs performing orderly? So we can perform the action orderly. You have lost the function of the tongue, that is taste. You like pasta, you go to the restaurant, nothing happens. The karma is not complete. You are frustrated. Did you understand the four factors? Body, yes. So did do you understand the four factors? The body, the doer in me, the sense in the motor organs, and their functioning should be proper. I was telling when you lost the connection that you love pasta. I always give that example. You love pasta, but now that taste bud is not functioning properly. The action will not be complete. Oh, you don't, you like pasta, but you don't feel any taste. Why our master says that every karma is defective? Fifth factor. What is the fifth factor? We need to go in deep and understand what is the fifth factor? Luck. Destiny, whether you name it luck, you name it destiny, you name it God, you name it existence, or you name it highest wisdom, whatever you want to name it. Or that master says, that depends on you. Did you have a desire? Did David has a desire to meet uh, Jerry? No. Was it previously des previously decided by my mind? No. Can I say it is luck or destiny or God or existence or the highest wisdom? Did Lara meet Eric? It was her desire. What is that? What is that mystery? I never thought that I'm going to meet David, Jerry, and Sergey, and eh, Lara. Did I think of it? I met it. So sometime I meet a person and the person reacts. Sometime I meet a person, the person responds. 
Sometimes we go too far in our relationship. Whether anything and everything. Are you understanding that point? Are you getting it? You may think that you are making a very rational, logical decision to buy a house at a particular place, this number. But behind there is a fifth factor. <laughs> Ask yourself. Question. Are you understanding that point? There is always a fifth factor of which I am not aware. Meditation helps you to explore and live with that fifth factor. And once you become aware of the fifth factor, the life, the quality of the life from inside changes completely. Your mind can never go into stress. It is because of the not able to recognize the fifth factor, what I say, I fail. So I have a negative ego. I succeeded, so I have a positive ego. Do you see that? I succeeded here. So I give responsibility to my ego. I lose all the other factors, which is body, sense, and the motor organs are functioning properly. <laughs> Build your ego. Go to a restaurant. You are going there to eat pasta. Your taste bud is not working. <laughs> Ask yourself. <laughs> Ask your ego. Come on. Taste pasta. I'm giving a very simple example. <laughs> body controls me or I control the body? If I control the body, tell the body from today, you are not allowed to be sick. See, the destiny comes. The, some higher consciousness is there that controls this body. Are you understanding that? I'm not saying luck or destiny, God, whatever you want to say it. So Krishna in the Gita says, you name whatever you want to say. But there is always a fifth factor, which is not known to the mind fully. In meditation and mindfulness, you know that fifth factor and you enter into a totally a life that is full of meditative state 24 by 7. Are you getting it? Can you answer why the Sergei is born in Ukraine? Why I was born in India? <laughs> and I was thrown, if I use the word, by the destiny to be here. <clears throat> why? So the journey of meditation and mindfulness says that we can explore, discover the fifth factor in every karma that we do it. I tell people last last word and then ah, briefly, tell, yes, I can touch that part also and then we will do it. You speak one thing to your honey and the honey becomes happy. You speak the same thing at a different time. The honey is upset with you. Fifth factor. I can give you, from moment to moment, I can give you the examples of that fifth factor is present, of which we are not aware. Why we are not aware? Why we cannot explore? But the ego covers. Ego. Ego comes in the front and it wails the fifth factor. Master says, refine, redefine the karma. 
if you don't have a body, can you perform the karma? <laughs> Our ego says, I'm doing it. I have done it. Who is this crazy I living in you? Can you explore that? And if your ego says, yes, I can do it. Okay, do it without body. <laughs> do it without sense organs. Tell your ego to destroy coronavirus in the world. <laughs> Fifth factor. Are you getting it? We are going deeper into the journey. Are you getting it? So it is not getting scared. I have to explore fifth factor. I have the right intention. I have the right knowledge. I perform the action. That action goes wrong. Have you not seen in your life? You have the 200% right intention and you are talking to a person. The other person is taking it negatively. Fifth factor. You try to persuade, and still the guy says, okay, now I understand your motto. <laughs> Are you getting it? Third and the fourth principle points to let me explore the fifth factor. Don't question. When any thought comes to me and that prompts me to action to satisfy the desire, ask the mind why. The mind has been satisfying all the desires day and night, 24 by 7. So ask why. The moment you ask why, you get the right reason. You can replace it with the right intention. You are doing the same karma outside. You're performing the same karma outside. That doesn't make any difference. But the qualitative change comes from in your life. Are you getting it? Every karma first vibrates as a thought in the mind. By default, the mind causes the desire. And the mind, by default, says, satisfy the desire. Question. When you question what will happen, you are questioning your ego. You are questioning your satisfaction. And then move to the next step. Explain. Ask yourself, what is the fifth factor? You want to take care of your kids, you love your kid, but the kid doesn't listen to you. You have the 100% right intention. Fifth factor. <laughs> you can explore that fifth factor in almost every activity. Are you understanding that? The third and the fourth step is to become aware where is the fifth factor is it overpowered by my ego replace it if it is overpowered by desire to satisfy it replace it let me become aware continue to perform the action you will see the qualitative change in your life from the day one are you getting it even if you receive 5% of what I discussed today, the journey begins. Fifth factor is always there. Are you getting it? Whether you say the fifth factor is a luck or a destiny or a God or the highest consciousness or your true nature. Whatever you want to say, that depends on you. But if the mind awakens to that fifth factor, life is transformed. Whether you are a businessman or a teacher or a student or a father or a son, and not talk much, let us start our journey of 
meditation practice. Close your eyes. Mm. Close your eyes in the stays. If I say the stays, zero. Put the Eastern wisdom into your mind. Install Shreyas. What is Shreyas? What is right and good? Not what I think, but what is right and good in life. That is known as the path of the Shreyas. And the, here the right and good is defined the one that is all pervading, that transcends the time and the space and the cause and effect relationship. Can I keep that in my mind? What is that? With reference to my thought, my speech, my action from today, which I say, install Shreyas, what is right and good for me is also right and good for you. It is open to intellectual understanding also the very kindness, peace, happiness, love, wisdom are common elements. <clears throat> you cannot refute this. What is you like and what is pleasant are constantly changing. You like one thing today and you dislike the same thing. What is pleasant for you today may be a painful tomorrow. Means, factor is, the mind is constantly aware of unchanging consciousness and ever-changing world. Let the mind in the stage one, we go to looking inside. The mind is facing within. The beauty of the mind facing within means the mind is going beyond the sense organs and the very thought pattern. That is the meaning of the mind is looking within and moving within. What happens? The factor that is responsible for putting body into action is absent in the body because mind is looking inside. The mind must have a motivation to act. The body naturally moves into the steadiness. This is what Patanjali is saying. Sthir Sukhamasana. Patanjali is not saying, sit still, force your body. Ten years learning for lotus pose and then meditate. No. He says, are you aware mind is facing within, looking within, the body will become steady. So we settle in the stage one by being comfortable. Where is being comfortable? Looking at the neck joint. You see the subtle mind from the past impression? The, it starts repeating the same action. No, you mind moves to the neck joint. You become aware, you feel sensation, being comfortable and steady. Shoulder joints, you feel the sensation being comfortable in steadiness. Hip joint, sensation being comfortable in steadiness, the entire body. The mind moves in the entire body. Mind moves in the entire body, from the top of the head to the toes. And you... experience sensation being comfortable and steady. We have the third step. 
in the same stage number one being carefree and i can tell you by regular practice if you're doing the practice regularly being the moment i will say being carefree and the mind knows it it's a knowledge practice the what the mind knows all the thoughts feelings sensations are different from me separate from me and i'm a witness of that it is like when I'm looking the sky where the birds are flying, I see the sky is constant and the birds are flying. There are two levels of the mind. Mind deep inside, reflected by my true nature, what I explained the Shreya's part, what is right and good, non-changing. That reflects in the mind, deeper mind. And the surface mind thoughts are there. Let the thoughts be there. Let the birds keep flying. Nothing happens to the sky. That is the meaning of being carefree. In that state, we go to the second stage, first step, and that we will keep that, these two steps as it is, until the mind realizes that it is purified and we don't need the stage two, and then we'll skip it. So purify the mind. Now look deep inside the rib cage. Body remains in the state of being comfortable and start breathing short and quick breath from the chest through both the nostrils in a cheerful state, playful. And stop it. We did it for two minutes. We'll not waste your time in explaining. You already know. Take a deep, silent, and slow inhalation into the belly, chest, up to the throat. And while breathing out, make the humming sound. Keep your focus deep inside the forehead. Just continue the journey. Mm hmm. Every inhalation is deep, silent, slow for a longer period. And every humming is louder, deeper, longer. Why? Naturally, the rate of your breath per minute will go down. So I'm more focused on that aspect for a couple of sessions, and then we will go a little deeper. Mm. 
of the humming sound will move into the stage three, the car, the driver, and the highway directly. Continue with the dead, deep, silent, slow breath. The moment the breath is going in the mind moves inside the right arm, either from the shoulder to the fingertips and from the fingertips to the shoulder inside in the space. So the mind moves with the breath in the space inside the right arm. You bypass that physical body. You're looking inside in the space. That is the highway. The mind is the driver. And the breath is the car you are driving. So after all, if you smoothly drive the car, you keep a uniform speed. That is what is the deep, silent, slow breath inside the right arm. Moving the mind inside the left arm. Now see that the body remains in the state of steadiness. You bypass the body. First factor of karma. If you link it, you will enjoy that. Now, when the breath starts going in, the mind moves with the breath inside the left arm in the space or blankness. That is your highway. And when the breath starts coming out means exhaling in silence no noise the noise comes the mind will be active which mind ego mind And now inside the right leg, same thing. The location is changing, but the mind and the breath are going together. They are perfectly aligned. Whatever master says, chale vati chalam chittam nishchale nishchalam bhavit. The prana is regulated by the mind. The mind can be regulated by the prana. We are regulating the both. What happens? The prana merges into the mind. You feel the tremendous energy and then the mind goes within. It leads to variety of your experiences. And that gives us a bright indication whether we are progressing, where we are. We'll understand that. And I'll continue. Now move the mind inside the left leg. 
we are doing nyasa. In the stage three, goal is to help the mind to live deep within. How deeper? As deep as possible. Why? How to explore that fifth factor, whether it's true nature or you say, whatever the name you want to give. Now, moving the mind inside the spine with the same breath. As you inhale, the mind drops from the top, crown of the head to the tailbone. When you exhale, deep silence, the mind rises from the tailbone in the space to the crown of the head. So when even the Buddha says the middle path, this is the middle path. So if we want to follow the middle path with reference to the body, the prana, the mudra, and uh, the Kriya, it becomes Kundalini meditation. And this is just the mindfulness. So difference in the steps. In the Kundalini path, <clears throat> there is one very silent and a very higher path. It is known as Shaivism. From there I picked up these steps. Continue. And now stop this, the next step, which I named as Sankalpa with Om Shanti, is not only a check, but also the next step to help our mind to go deeper. What we do? Move the mind casually at the crown of the head and drop there on stay there with the pause let the mind move inside the heart drop there shanti again the pause there are many ways of doing it Om. Shanti. The mind is saying Om Shanti with the movement first on the crown of the head without the breath. That is a higher practice. When you do without the breath, it becomes a higher practice. So what you're doing? Move mind on the crown of the head. 
failure casually. Then you drop home with awareness of the infinite space. Okay. Then the mind drops. Mind drops inside the heart. And then you say Shanti mentally. Shanti mentally. If there is no peace, there is no happiness. So Sanskrit word Sukha is peace. Now see these crazy masters, what they did. So Kha has two syllables. Kha means space. Su means good. So what is peace? It is a good space within me. What? The shape of the peace is the infinite space? Yes. So that is why we are doing what we are doing. Um, infinite space, ka shanti. See that. The journey is rewarding all every time because we move from one step to the higher one. Now we understand the significance of saying Om Shanti. Om is just a symbol, but that sound has been tried for thousands of years to validate. We can use also other sound, but we have to validate first. And now leave that Om Shanti. The last is living in mindfulness. We are using the same step. Three-pointed awareness of the breath in that state. You are looking the breath going in and out. You are feeling the sensation of the breath which goes in and out inside the nose by default. And you are aware, you are not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Why I am repeating this uh, step again and again in that stage? One day the mind will awaken that I have been trying to perform all my actions and claiming that I achieve the result. But there is some unknown factor. So that is why the third point of awareness, where I say, do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Who is going to change the mind? Supported by the ego. Unconsciously, habitually. You stay in that state of almost doing nothing. You are in the state of doing nothing and still you are aware of the three-pointed awareness of the breath. We are sentient beings. We cannot prevent ourselves not to be sentient, not to be conscious by default. My eyes are open by default. I am looking at you. I am aware. The monitor of my computer is not aware of me. Shreyas and Shreyas.
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. Take your time. If your hands are clean completely, bring your both of arms. Place it on your closed eyes. So you open the eyes inside your palms. So what do you find? Let me explain. You find only the infinite space. There what happens, the mind or the intellect translates your experience into thoughts that we need to share. Bring the hands down. And uh, yes, wonderful hand you were doing while sitting. Unmute first. lips of your computer is closed so you have to open it <laughs> so how are you sergey in the meantime and does it was hard Actually, this session was hard to understand all the concepts you are describing. And like, I'm constantly looking for something in my life, which I can like, is it true or not? Uh, is it the same as my experience for uh, like was before? How I can use, how I can use that knowledge? That's, that's a lot of questions. And that is why with that concept which I explained today, I put one stage in the beginning of the Shreyas and Prayas. So your intellect should explore Shreyas. What is Shreyas? What is right and good? What is right and good is defined as everlasting, all pervading, continues to exist in past, present, and the future. Does your body exist? No. Breath? No. Mind? No. Intellect? No. Ego? No. Thought? No. We come to the fifth factor. So don't overstretch your mind. If you overstretch your mind, that is why we introduce the principles. Now, see, it becomes so easy. Are you getting it? It becomes easy. Careful. <laughs> Can my wife or honey or a husband or son or a daughter or a bit exist? Follows the principle of the Shreyas? No, I did not have the business. Now I have it. I may switch on to something else. I have a tremendous energy now. Maybe for another 10 years I'll be older. I'll have less energy. It is changing. Instantly the intellect should shift its awareness to what is unchanging, what is all pervading, what transcends time. Can intellect find it? No. Finish. Tell the intellect, stop it. Let me maintain my awareness. Finished. So you enjoy, you're cheerful again. But if you want to find timelessness in time, how is it possible? That will make your mind crazy. How are you, Anne? I'm fine. I just listen <laughs> and try to absorb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told you before. Get to that place which is inner peace. Uh, 
and stay there. <laughs> but you were there. You did the practice while sitting, and that is helping you a lot. Maybe I should continue doing that. Yeah. So how are you, Lara? Here I am. Um, I I think I'm okay. <laughs> it was it was a lot today. I, it's like I want to look back at what I was writing down my notes. I feel, I feel like I still have some more to kind of grasp onto. Um, and I'm working on being open to the mystery and trying not to control things. Um, and I have a really prevalent situation that I need to kind of clear up right now. Um, and I'll have the opportunity to look at that tomorrow more, but it just, but it, it's amazing. Was yeah, the meditation was good. It was, it's amazing to me how I'm, I'm seeing how it's almost like that noise that's in front of you like an obstacle or something and like trying to see, okay, am I walking around? Am I walking through it? What am I doing with it? And what's everything else being involved? I think I should uh, talk in one line. When you listen to these principles and your mind and intellect based on its level of awareness accepts and when there is an acceptance, even 5% follows the practice of meditation. You get the sense of it deeper mm -hmm. inside. But the intellect says, no, I did not understand. Mm -hmm. you, you see that, Sergey and Lara, both with you. So what we need to do, we have to listen to it again. Mm -hmm. Listen to it again. We need to contemplate. We need to reflect on it. And then the becomes clear. That's what I have been doing for the last almost now 40 years. Now it be, has become a play and a fun. In second nature. And yes, <laughs> pure nature. <laughs> How are you, David and Jerry? <laughs> um. So for me, it was um, very quickly getting into just like a blank space. And I can't describe anything other than it was just blank for, I don't know how long we were in that space for, but just blank. Just blank. Uh, Wonderful. Yes. Because that space will start a revolution if that continues. You see that, this journey of mindfulness, how it looks like? It looks like that 1,000 people are standing in a line, and the God says, five-year-old, you, you come first, not the 90-year-old. <laughs> no, I'm talking of the death, you know, giving a physical example. Now, by that in mindfulness, you have done one practice from even a crazy teacher. The mind was so much receptive at that moment, you are totally absorbed. You got it. You found it. The other guy is doing for years and years. It can happen. Fifth factor. <laughs> How are you, Jerry? Doing well. Um, for me, it was an interesting in in the in noticing how heavy I felt during um, the the niyasa part of it. Yeah. Um, the rooted and heavy and a downward energy, and then when we started breathing up and down the spine, how that was such a lifting um, oh, energy. Great. So. Uh, uh, just just felt that the um, awareness of that difference. Yes. It means the very personal effort while moving the, uh, doing the nyasa when the mind was moving from the tailbone to the crown. It is known as the personal effort where the mind works in unison with the power of action, 
power of desire and the power of knowledge. All the three joins together and you have an expansion. Wonderful. Right. How are you? Yes, yes, continue. Yeah. How are you, Stephen? Uh, I'm well, thank you. Um, it was a, uh, my meditation was a, a fantastic experience. Um, something that, um, you know, when David references the blankness, um, when I closed my eyes uh, and got myself positioned, everything at that point for me went blank as well. Very um, good. Only thing I was, I, I, I was tuned into your voice and I heard absolutely nothing else and i know that there, i have actually have there's there's light music playing in the room i heard oh. nothing and during my meditation there was a point in which i actually questioned myself like how come i don't hear anything and at, at that moment i saw a figure in the distance and then i tuned into that figure and started moving towards it and then it said to me, just be, and it disappeared. And that happened twice during the meditation. And I felt like I wasn't even ready to come out of it when you said focus in and then put your eyes over your palms and then open your eyes and reflect. It's like I felt energy go from my fingertips back into my heart. It's a deeper state. I will repeat what my master used to say. Someone asked him that, what is the indication you have succeeded in meditation? So he answered, you go into meditation and it becomes difficult for you to come out of that meditative state. Simple answer, but it has a very deeper understanding. But it does not mean you're still living into that meditative state. Meditative state does not mean that your eyes are open and you are not in meditation. No. Deeper inside, you are already there. You have a glimpse of it. Don't worry, Sergey. how long it took you to do the certain certifications and entered into that profession. 